Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Uh, today it's gonna be a ZVP on Destination, an older one, a 1.16 replay. Between Hyuk and Bisu, top side, it's our Yellow Zerg player, it's gonna be Hyuk. And in the bottom side, it is our guy Bisu. Alright, so a ZVP here featuring Terry the Overlord. <laughs> Alright, Terry. If you can stay alive till the end of the replay, I'll be very impressed, because Bisu is the top Protoss player of all time. Not right now, I feel like, but for the extent that Brudor has been around, Bisu is the top. How about that? Yep, I know you agree with me, Bisu. Check out some merch featuring uh, Terry the Overlord here at falconpaladin.store. We've got shirts with his face on it. We've got a mug with his face on it. We've got uh, hoodies and t-shirts and beanies with Falcon branded stuff. Falcon Paladin dot store. We ship anywhere. Anywhere on Earth except uh, North Korea? And maybe Mongolia? I don't know. I do not know. <laughs> I don't know off the top of my head. But we ship to most countries. All right. And in the top right of falconpaladin.store, there's a currency selector. It's defaulted to Australian dollars, so if you're not in Australia, go ahead and click up there, select your country from the drop-down, and you're on your way. Hmm, overpool opening here from Hyuk. All right, just, just playing it safe. Just playing it safe. Bisu here was going to go for a, uh, a Nexus first. But it's an overpool, so that is not safe. So we're going to do a gateway. <laughs> oh, a forge. Uh, yeah, okay. A forge is about safer than a gateway against an overpool. So a forge fast expand here. If it was a hatch first, it would have been a nexus first from Bisu. I can tell you that much. Oh, okay. So sneaking, sneaking a hatchery over here. The probe's like, are you expanding? No. Are you... Are you taking gas? No. Where's your expansion? Bisu is so confused. So confused right now. Anyway, Nexus coming in. Cannon coming in for defensive purposes. Obviously, Ling's on the way. Ling's on the move. Hup, 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 hup. They are soldiers, in a way. They're not exactly wearing uniforms, but... They're definitely soldiers of the Zerg. Now look at this. This is uh, Bisu just like, now you're expanding? Is he being caught off guard by this? Is he be like, are you just playing bad? Why are you just now getting gas? Where is your money going? And the answer is over here. Bisu is not checking this, man. Bisu, I really feel like he doesn't know what's happening here. Yeah, Terror the Overlord pokes in and he sees... I think he saw the, the cannon warping in and was like, let's not go in there. I guess this cannon. Saw the gateway coming up, said, all right, we're just going to send the lings back home. We're going to try to kill this very sneaky, very slippery probe. We are the tiniest bit faster than probes if we don't have our speed upgrade. So we can get like one hit every 37 seconds, which is not enough. Look at these shields regening. Oh, so frustrating. Get out of here, probe. No one likes your style. I mean, speed's not going to be done for a while yet because he just got his gas. I'm really surprised this probe left. Maybe the probe's going to go check that third base location now. Nope, coming back in. <laughs> I really think Yuck is getting away with this. I really think that Bisu has no idea that it's there. And he's like, Yuck, what are you doing? But there's a list of reasons for this, right? There's a list of reasons you can go through in your head that tell you why this base was so late and the extractor was so late. And the answer is, ah, he sees it now. Like, oh, you've had this for some time. Well, don't I feel silly? Well, you should, and you probably do. Okay, where's our Stargate at? Cybercore finishing up. No Stargate yet. Second gas coming in here from Bisu as well. Lair? Man, about halfway done here. But still, not going to be able to keep up with the time that Stargate finishes and Corsairs start producing. Bisu's the one who popularized this whole Corsair opening in ZVP. So that he would be getting a Corsair makes a ton of sense. Absolute ton of sense. But yeah, see, the time it takes for this lair to finish morphing in and to aspire is longer than the time it takes for this Stargate to finish warping in and make a Corsair. Incredibly. Doom, doom, 
Citadel of a Dune on the way. Nothing too surprising there. Speedlots and Corsairs, a match made in heaven in general. Or maybe we're going for DTs and Corsairs. Who knows? That's a possibility here as well. Spire coming in. Oh, Probe finally died. Here? About here. Dude, Hyuk's got a lot of lings. I don't... There's two cannons and two zealots and a dragoon. I don't know what you're trying to do here, Hyuk, but I don't like it. It's it's too late for this kind of ling pressure. There's no way he sees that and he's like, Ugh, yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. Overlord, check for this third base. No, cool. Check for this third base, maybe. Maybe run over here, guys. Send a single ling to see if there's a base over there you can kill. That'd be awesome. Corsair out. Mm, Templar Archive's coming in. That is a little bit early to try, to try to go for Storm, but it could easily just be Storm. We'll keep an eye on that. We'll see what Bisu's trying to do. And this is Destination. You know how this map works. I don't have to explain much to you. Hydralisk Den on the way. Scouts the see what I'm talking about. Corsair makes it, produces a Corsair, sends it across the entire map, scouts the Spire before it's done. That's how fast... Protoss tech is, and that's how slow Zerg tech is. Because Zerg can make five mutas at a time, and you can't make five Stargates, or five, well, you can make five Stargates, I guess, but you can't make five Corsairs at a time that easily without investing a lot into that. So that's why Zerg tech is slower. Okay, so no third base here from Abisu yet. Three bases rolling, I mean, for some time now. From Hyuk, nice sim city here at the third base in case Zealots show up, and it is DT's. Ah, it is the Dark Templar. Okay, so DT Corsair on the opening here from Bisu. Will it work? That's always the question everybody asks. Will it work? I don't know if those Scourge cut a glimpse of those Dark Templar boys. You can kind of see a shimmer on the map if you're looking closely enough for them. I mean, obviously you can't attack them because they're cloaked, but you can see them, and that's basically good enough. Oh, there's no detection at this natural base. The Overlords don't have speed yet either. And where are the Hydras? A Hydralisk Den is done. So, oh, Overlord pops. Scourge, kill one of the Corsairs. And actually, enough to finish off the second Corsair. So they're just going to get out of here. They're just going to bail. Dude, that was tight. Popped an Overlord just in time. DT showed up. Ow, ow. Took some sunken hits. And they're like, okay, never mind. Zero, zero kills on those dudes. That was some really sick timing from Bisu. Got an Archon out. I just like looking at Archons. Their eyes are flashing. It's kind of floating there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The remaster Archon design is just super hot. It is beautiful. Who's in charge of that? I don't know. They probably don't work for Blizzard anymore, though, if I had to guess. Ah, Yuck is taking his back safe base. Minerals only pocket. Intriguing for sure. It's just a personal preference whether you want to take this early or take it late. Some people take it early. It's a safe base to take. It's not awesome. You don't get gas with it, but you get a nice influx of minerals in a time of the game. If you're planning on being aggressive or you just want to get a big army faster, that's a way to do it. But if you save it, then you're thinking maybe later on it's harder to expand to these bases on the sides. I'd like to take this later, maybe get one of them up earlier, and then if I need it, I'll, I'll throw this one up here too. Anywho. Yeah, Queen's Nest on the way. This is probably going to be a spore, if I had to guess that this creep colony is going to be upgraded to. No, it's a sunken. Who needs spores? Who needs them? We have overlords for detection purposes. In anti-air, we've got Scourge. Screw it. Robotic facility in production. Maybe for some reaver shenanigans. That's always fancy stuff. Bisu doesn't have a third base yet, which I'm worried about for him. He's trying to make a push up here up this right side, where there are you know, speed lots, archons, but that... Two Sunkins there with a third one coming in. A little bit of Ling support. The ability to pop in some Hydras as necessary. Ooh, Lurkers, uh, Lurkers morphing in too. And there they go. They all morph in here at the natural base. That is not breakable. This is just Hydra Ling Lurker breakable by this army? No. 100% no. These Lings try to run across the map and see what's going on. As the third base comes up from Bisu, he's attacking while expanding. Because of course he is. The Lings are like, die, cannon! The cannon does not die. Because Zealots are there to help it out. The, ooh, the Hydras, though, in the middle of the map. Uh, chasing down some Archons. Some Zealots here, too. Just kind of straight up fleeing. That Archon is dead. This Archon might get target fired here, too. No. Actually, attacking the Zealots, retreating instead. They take all the H uh, all the, all the damage there. 
Oh, oh, no. We didn't bring it in detection with us, though. So DTs actually halt this attack on the third base. I think he probably could have held it with the number of zealots that he's got. I don't know, with the lurkers there, too. Dude, do you not have Overlord speed yet? Seriously? Oh, if he'd had Overlord... He does have Overlord speed. He just didn't bring an Overlord with him. Is the problem. All right. So Storm is getting researched. Not going heavier on those DTs. But yeah, hit that like button if you're enjoying this cast. Hit the subscribe, too. I hope by the time this thing posts, I'll have 60,000 subscribers, which would be awesome. That'd be a major milestone for me that I've been trying to get for a while now. <laughs> Embarrassingly long time. But, yeah. Do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button. If I'm not there yet, you can help. And the like button just lets the algorithm know that I'm here. These lings are engaging without any sunken support, so they die for nothing. They just throw their lives away. They kill nothing. They accomplish nothing with their lives. Maybe they dropped a little bit of shield off some of those zealots, but, like, they're okay. They're really doing fine. Not worried about it. Hive up for the Zerg player. Adrenal glands coming in. Defiler mound coming on. And this is when Zerg start to get scary. Four basing Zerg. Lurkers. Dark Swarm. Lings. All sorts of shenanigans. Dark or Psionic Storm is your saving grace here. Maybe don't lose them to Lings, though. Okay, good. None of those High Templar died to Lings. Oh, that one sure did. Uh, man, if he's had Adrenal, more High Templar would be dead. Yeah. So, if, I mean, if you're a Protoss player and you're like, I can't deal with Dark Swarm Lurkers and Ling and Hydra support, you got to get that Swarm, or that Storm, man. That's how you do it. That's how all the greats do it. If you've ever watched Bisu, you know. Fifth base coming in left side from Hyok. And a fourth base safe back coming in from Bisu here, too. So... Got gateways up, got some cannons in case, I don't know, some mutalisks show up or something crazy like that. There's not actually a Corsair Ball out, so a Muta Tech Switch here to try to snipe off those High Templar would be pretty good. I don't think that would be that would be bad at all. I'm not a huge fan of Mutas in this matchup, but when there are no Corsairs out, and by that I mean... I don't think there are any Cor... Oh, there's one Corsair right here. Yeah, like some kind of a big Muta Tech Switch would be pretty cool. But he's got options, and he's going to go for an Ultralisk Cavern instead. Which I'm a big fan of. I think the Ultralisk is my favorite Brood War unit. They're just big and beefy and strong and mean. and They're not particularly overpowered either, right? Like, sometimes you see them and you're like, oh. Well, there were four Reavers there, so now you're all dead. Or, oh, there were 25 Siege Tanks there, so now you're all dead. I just, I like units that are fun and maybe not impossible to stop, you know? Anyway... Destination, if the game goes on long enough, comes down to these left and right side bases. 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock. If you can hold them as a Zerg player here. If you get both of them as a Zerg player, you're in a pretty good spot. If you can't get either of them, you're going to lose. And if you get one of them, uh, maybe. Maybe you can pull it off, but it's dicey. It's 190 to 159 supply here. BC's macro has been insane. He's taking this right side base too for a fifth. It's like, well, I'm maxed out. It's really time to rampage, isn't it? But, God, these lurkers are a problem. Plus, there are defilers. I'm saying that, but I don't see any right now. So, that seems like a problem. Ah, taking that right side base. Yuck is. Can he hold it, though? Not. I don't know. Like, not with Zealots kind of around this back door. But they're distracted by the lurkers placed back there for that very reason. Scourge trying to catch an obs. No good micro on that obs there from Bisu. Don't like it. And, yeah, without Dark Swarm, Lurker's getting picked out easily by Dragoons. Dragoon damage versus Lurkers is immense. And then the Lynx try to jump on you. Swarm those suckers, too. Dark Swarm is up. Zealots don't really care about that at all. There you go. You throw in your Psionic Storm inside the Dark Swarm. Have a great time. No more Storm available. Oh, there is definitely more Storm available. That guy just casually throws one down. Gets 14 kills. That Maybe some of that was from previous engagements, but... Yuck's base up the right side is in a lot of trouble. B oh, okay, Bisu pulls back, though. Pulls it back. Dark Swarm is up, and then you, yeah, immediately the Dark Swarm pops, and Psionic Storm comes in almost on reflex. It's not a bad idea, because there's going to be stuff you want to kill inside the Dark Swarm, and Psionic Storm will take care of all of it, thanks. That Defiler is somehow still alive. Zealots inside the Dark Swarm having a pretty decent time of it, but... uh. Oh, look at this guy. Look at this Dragoon being protected by the Dark Swarm. Attack this Hydralisk. Oh, now nobody can attack anybody. We're all inside the bugs. Because these are bugs, you know. Did you know that? Lore-wise, the Defiler throws up a swarm of bugs that deflects and blocks incoming projectiles. 
fun stuff, fun bit of lore that really doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's fun anyway. Okay, anabolic synthesis coming in, more lurkers on the way. There wasn't really a lot of time to make any ultralisks before that attack came, so instead it was lings and lurkers and hiders and stuff. But ultralisks will be produced eventually here. It's 186 to 147 supply here from Hyuk. Hyuk's playing really well. Hyuk is not my favorite Zerg player, but he's... He's on the list. He's on the list of dudes that are really good at Zerg. And can he beat be Bisu here today? He can. Will he? I don't know. Being down 50 supply at this stage of the game. I know Hydras are cheap and plentiful and great and stuff, and that kind of is the difference here, but... He's doing a fine job holding this off, right? Yes, he's losing a lot of Lings and a lot of Hydras in the meantime, but his income is beautiful. He's got this gas, which is incredibly good. He's got this gas, which is incredibly good, too. And Bisu's taking this left side base for himself. So like I said, if Zerg gets one of the bases, 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock, it's doable. But it's tough. Bisu's got to feel pretty good about this. He's effectively splitting the map in half right now is what he's doing. And against a Zerg player, you're okay with that. So one Ultralisk pops out, but he has absolutely no support from anything. He's got Oh, now he's got some friends. Uh-oh, this left side base of Hyuk's in a lot of trouble. But Ultralisks on your backside. Coming in with the flank, burrowing a Lurker in. And immediate Storm 1. Nope, Storm 2 kills it. Yeah, the Ultralisks without any help aren't actually very good. And that's my point. That's why I like them. Because I kind of like rooting for underdogs. All right. So right on. Oh, two Archons go down. Previous damage to those guys for sure. The Adrenal Lings against Dragoons are like, yes, please. How many drones are going to die here before the Lings... Oh, no! The Lings all get stormed reinforcements popping in here to kill High Templar. To kill High Templar. Oh, but the Dark Swarm protects the Ultralisk from your attacks. There we go. Back it up. And they do, but okay. He holds this base. A full evacuation of drones, except for these two, was necessary. Oh, hang on. You actually need to kill these Dragoons, though, but instead, he's going to run into Cannonville here. The Ultralisks do have a plus two attack, plus five armor. Kindness plating is done, which means that the Lings are at three to themselves and working on that plus three attack. So cannons really no match for it. An Ultralisk has to come back here and deal with these Dragoons at that left side base. And okay, Bisu losing this is a major advantage here from Hyuk. And he's up now, 142 to 140, oh, whatever. Basically even on total supply. Bisu's got more income because he's got more probes. But losing this base is huge. That puts the Zerg player ahead in the long run. It doesn't mean that Bisu can't win this thing in the next four or five minutes. But it means the longer the game goes on, the more likely it is that Chuck's going to be in a fine economic position. It still comes down to execution. It still comes down to macro. It still comes down to recognizing when an attack is non-viable. And, oh, look, there's DTs and Zealots and High Templar here. No, oh, that was a mistake. That was like three or four storms at the same place. They don't stack. Good plague, though. Beautiful plague, though. Hmm. So beautiful a plague. Okay. Every everything's calm. Everything's chill. Falcon Paladin dot store for your merch needs. Also, if you, I mean, some people recently have been using the super chat function here on YouTube to support me that way. They don't want any merch. They just want to support the channel if they can. So the little heart button down below. Allows you to do a one-time donation of whatever you want to do. And if you want to join the channel, nice surround on that Archon. Ling's Ultras chasing this away. Nice plague. Doesn't catch any of his Ultras, which is hard to do. Because Ultras are up there face smashing. And it's likely for them to catch a plague too if you're plaguing the army they're attacking. Yeah, more... More scheduled support on a monthly basis. You can click the join button down below to become a channel member with access to extra emojis and a super cool green name with a super cool badge next to your name too when you leave comments. Awesome stuff available for you that way to join the channel. And there's always Patreon. Patreon.com slash Falcon Paladin too for as little as a buck a month. These DTs? More DTs than I thought made today. I guess if your enemy is making ultras, DTs are nice. Ooh, the Corsair group got big. Never mind, the Corsair group just knocked out down to two. Play, see, that's what I'm talking about. Plague catching those ultras. That hurts too, man. Plagues take the, f or, yeah, ultras take the full brunt of that plague, but shutting down this nine o'clock base again is massive. The Hydra is against the, oh my gosh, these Corsairs just need to get sneezed on and they're dead. 
Are there any Hydras at all? Oh, there was one Hydra. One Hydra just got two Corsair kills with two shots. That never happens. That's a rarity for sure. 195 to 160 total supply here. Hyuk is looking good. Like I said, taking the 3 o'clock and destroying the 9 o'clock is a big deal. Zealots, Dark Swarm. Storm is up here too. Coming out of the Dark Swarm to fight. Zealots trying to hold their own right now. Is there enough Zerg to just push on through and kill this left side third base? I don't think. Maybe. Oh, the Dark Swarm here against these cannons is beautiful. Another Archon. Is he gonna... No, oh, he does survive. He gets six kills and one of them's an Ultra. Oh, these Ultras were... Some of them were previously plagued. I bet is why they died so easily. But look at this flood of Zerg coming in. Look at it. Look at it. Yuck is really, really pushing hard into this base. If he can take it down, it's almost a guaranteed win for him. To not lose any of his own bases and kill two of Beastie's bases on this map, where bases are rare? Well, this seems to be held pretty well by Bisu. This attack didn't do a whole lot. It was kind of scattered. Kind of all over the place. Not one mass swarm. Yeah, like these lings coming down. What are you trying to do? Yeah, go back home. Not going to accomplish anything by yourselves out there. We are Zerg. We are Legion. Okay, Ultras, Lings, there it is. This is working together for the good of all Zerg kind. The storms are on point because this is Bisu we're talking about, but is it enough to hold this attack? The DTs, man. Yeah, DTs sell it against Ultras. Ultras don't like fighting there. They really don't. For obvious reasons, man. Woof. Shuttle coming in. More DTs. Ooh, maybe some Reaver shenanigans. Are there any Reavers out now? I don't... Mm, yes, there's one in production. So going for it. Oh, boy. Yeah, this is a problem. This is a problem for Bisu. This 9 o'clock base getting taken by the Zerg. It gives him one extra base up on the Protoss. And he's just been making some good trades so far. For BC to win this game requires him to either kill that base and take it or make some incredible trades today. Like more than he usually does as Protoss and as one of the best Protosses of all time and maybe the best Protoss of all time. Drone transfer over to the 9 o'clock. Handful of lurkers defend it. No detection. Oh, there is detection. Okay. So DT dies immediately. This DT is like, oh, that's not a good place for me. Send the Zealots up. I don't know. Oh, Lings and Lurkers working together. Good combo. Yeah, Bizu's in trouble. Oh, good storm. A handful of Lings at this stage of the game. You just can't attack into any kind of an army. I mean, maybe go to... Try to mess with the base over here. Dark Swarm, Ling attack it. But handful of Lings on their own at this stage is not going to get a lot of value. Not even close. This is just, this is great, man. This is great for Hyuk holding this left side. Okay. There was almost a pre-split on that Plague. Did he see it? Maybe he saw it coming. The Defiler wasn't exactly hiding. Not the biggest Plagues today, but they've been pretty consistent and pretty awesome. All right, Ling Ultra, Hydra, coming in here, Storm 2, I don't know, man, this is a lot, nice play, this is a lot of Protoss, Reavers in the mix now, this is where the tide could turn for Hyok, he is someone who is very good, but sometimes certain battles can go poorly for him, and really be the difference, but good flank coming in this left side, it's forcing the Reavers to retreat from the position. Good hits, though. These Reavers are taking... I was just going to say, they're taking no damage. But they certainly are taking some damage, as evidenced by that Reaver being in red health. Bisu trying to push up this middle. Did it work for him? I don't know that it did. Man, yuck. I think it's just he hasn't lost any bases. And if you don't kill any bases... Come on. Okay, getting good surrounds on that Archon. The shuttle micro from Bisu was excellent. 
as it always is, but he's only got one Reaver remaining. Kills a Lurker with it, though. 169 to 116 supply is not going to happen. I don't know, man. That number is really hard to come back through it from, but it's Beast who we're talking about here. He does take down an Ultralisk. He's got some time to collect himself. But, dude, look at this. 68 to 64 workers. bisu has got idle probes and oversaturated bases all over the place at this point. He needs another base. And he... Okay, he's getting some shots off down... Oh. Okay. So, Reaver, 21 kills. 23 kills on the Reaver. And he kills another drone as he dies. Boss. Boss, man. I don't know why we're sacrificing probes at this stage of the game. Why? You're not maxed out. You're not really freeing up supply by doing this, but okay. Maybe just checking mineral count over there. I don't know, but 162 to 140 total supply in favor. Oh, Scourge dying. Just trying to bring observers home, I guess. Like He's got one ops here, but he'd like more big time attack on this third base, which is effectively mined out, but... It still represents a lot of Bisu's income right now. Maybe not a lot. Yeah, good plague on the responding zealots. Good storm from the responding High Templar. Dude, dude. The storms are good. One fifty nine to one nineteen supply. Bottom left base dies too. All the minerals are gone here, so this is more than a useless base. It really is. This back door is open, though, which is why these zealots are like, ah, i got to watch out for potentially ultras getting inside the main through this back ramp. But no, but guess what is happening? Chuck's coming in to the only source of income that Bisu has. And he pulls back. He waits for the defiler. He doesn't want to end detection, I guess, because there's also a DT here. Okay, plague on buildings. There's someone who's always like, why don't Zerg use plague on buildings? And I don't know, but that was a good one. DT holding the ramp against the Chonky Ultras, but can't hold it against the Lings. Yeah, Ultralisks in the mix. Any detection actually show? Yes, an Overlord did show up here, and Bisu losing this base. A lot of his probes are here. His army is moving up to the middle of the map, trying to see what it can do, but yo... And if Ultralisk did splash damage like they do in StarCraft 2, all those probes would be dead. He's trying with what he's got left here to come up the middle. He's got two more Reavers made. He can handle this little army, but man, Ling's coming around to flank to the left here. I don't know. It's a lot of Storm. It's a lot of dead Zerg. Okay. Bisu taking down another Ultralisk. Full surround on that guy, but he has no money left. He needs to win now. Is he going to win now? I don't know. It's Bisu we're talking about here. Can he? Absolutely. Some of the army comes back from destroying the last base of Bisu's. All Chuck has to do here is make trades. He doesn't have to kill this army. He just has to kill some of it. Which he's not doing a great job of, honestly. <laughs> like, ten Ultras have died in the last couple of minutes, it feels like. And not really gone a lot done. Oh, and the GG! Bisu taps out anyway. Ah, and GG Hyuk is your winner in 28 minutes of some really good ZVP stuff. I don't know. Was he just saying, sure, I could probably kill this base, but there's still income for the Zerg over here. He's producing stuff, and I'm not. Lurkers, Ultras, Lings, uh-uh. Even breaking these five Sunkins is going to be hard for this army because... A lot of these zealots have been plagued. Archons aren't particularly good in the situation either. And yeah, he, again, he could probably kill this base, but he's probably not going to be able to kill this one based on what's in that production tab from Hyuk. And he doesn't have enough money to rebuild his base. Long distance mining maybe could work, but it's really solid long distance mining here. Anyway, fantastic. Again, it just it comes down to Hyuk not losing a base today. Right? He's just not, didn't lose a base, never really had a big, strong attack on one either. None of these hatcheries are bleeding at all. The biggest attack was here, where the drones had to evacuate, but it was cleaned up pretty easily by Hyuk. And if you don't lose a base, and you take the 9 o'clock and the 3 o'clock on destination, you're probably just going to win, especially as a Zerg player. And as a Terran and Protoss, 100%. <laughs> you're just going to win against a Zerg player for sure, because the Zerg needs that income. So absolutely mind-boggling impressively good zerg play from the patch 1.16 
from Hyuk here. And Bisu, kind of at the peak of his powers, gets taken down by Hyuk. He did some such good stuff, though. I mean, he played... He played so well. As he always does. But man, Hyuk, he was just... He ate his Wheaties this morning or something. He lost so much stuff. Let's take a look at that. Because that'll tell us the number. 304,000 points from Hyuk. 294 from Bisu. Outproduced, woof, the Protoss player by about a 2 to 1 ratio, maybe more than that. Definitely more than that, and got out killed by about a 2 to 1 ratio, too. But mm, not as, the ratio was bigger for outproducing than outkilled, so that was just enough here. Plus, 34 to 1 kill death ratio on buildings is a huge deal. But yeah, 882 Zerg units produced, 707 of them died. It's a big number in 28 minutes. And then finally, yeah, this is the one. Outspending Bisu by, let's do some math here, 10, 12,000 resources in about 28 minutes. It's a good number. It's a good number. It's not like a guaranteed win, but, you know. It's all good. It's all good. Fantastic. Just a truly, truly fantastic display of ZB, ZVP there from Hyuk. Mm, that's going to be it from me. So this is Ben Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.